So syncing our data with Firebase turned out not to be so bad once we tried to do it. So your super mega bonus credit hyperfighting was to try to make authentication work with Firebase. Uh, who did this? Anybody get the authentication working? Right on. Uh, so where do we even start? Well, here in Firebase, I see authentication over here. Seems like a reasonable place to start. Set up sign-in method. Don't mind if I do. Let's hit set up sign-in method. Okay, I see email, password, phone, Google, etc. Google is probably the easiest because this is a Google service. So sure, let's cl click on Google. Google sign-in is automatically configured on your connected iOS and web apps to set up. Google sign in for your Android apps. You need to use blah, blah, blah. We're not, we don't have an Android app, so no problem. Just click enable. Cool. What's this web SDK configuration? Okay, I don't think I need that. Hit save. And now Google is enabled. Cool. What's a web setup? Okay, I already did that. Um, question mark, help. Ooh, auth sign-in methods help. That could be useful. Developer documentation. All right, Firebase authentication. Whole section in the docs on Firebase on how to do this. Here's Google sign-in. Let's read about that. Before you begin, add Firebase to your JavaScript project. Done. Enable Google, Google sign-in in the Firebase console. That's what we just did. Handle the sign-in flow with the Firebase SDK. OK. So to handle the sign-in flow with the Firebase JavaScript SDK, follow these steps. New Firebase.auth.google auth provider. Firebase.auth. So that Firebase object is in our base.js, right? So this seems like something that belongs there. You probably discovered you need to import one more thing. Did you discover that? Import Firebase slash auth. Since we're only importing the parts we're using, we have app, database, and auth now. And that just makes this work. Configure database. Uh, we could put configure authentication. Authentication. So it says var provider equals new firebase.auth Google auth provider. I'm of course not going to use var. We use const around these parts. Um, I'll call it Google provider because I think one of these days we'll probably want another kind of provider in here too. We'll give them more than one sign in option. So I'll name my variable Google provider, but this is what I do. New firebase.auth.google auth provider. Cool. Optional specify additional OAuth 2.0 scopes. Nah. So OAuth, who's heard of OAuth before? Anybody heard of OAuth? Yeah. OAuth 2. Oops, I misspelled that, but it knew what I meant. Yeah. Protocol for allowing third party applications to grant limited access to an HTTP service. So it is a thing for um, authentication APIs. And all of the ones we would configure with Firebase use OAuth. So whether you're doing uh, Google or Facebook or Twitter or GitHub or whatever, you're going to be using OAuth. But we don't have to know how the OAuth thing works. We just follow these instructions, and it's super easy. OK, I'll skip all these optional steps. So the next thing we need to do is authenticate with Firebase using the Google provider object. We have the provider object right now, right? Right here. So you can prompt your user to sign in with their Google accounts either by opening a pop-up window or by redirecting to the sign-in page. For our purposes, the pop-up window is easier. To sign in with a pop-up window, call sign in with pop-up. Firebase.auth open close parens. Sign in with pop-up and give it the provider. So here's what we're going to do. 
Remember that we can have named exports in addition to default exports. So I have export default base. How about we export const Google provider? That means we can import Google provider inside curly braces from another file. And let's also export con or export uh, const auth equals Firebase dot auth open close parens. Notice we call sign in with pop up on Firebase dot auth open close parens. So whatever whatever kind of object that returns. I'm going to export that so I can import it somewhere else. And then before I forget, I'm going to change my base.example.js with all these changes. I think I moved rebase to the bottom. There we go. So now I'm exporting const, excuse me, I'm exporting const auth as Firebase auth. And then I'm exporting uh, my Google auth provider as Google provider. Here real quick are those two lines. So where do I want to do this? Sign in. Sign in component. Seems legit. Instead of having a username here or an email address, I could just hide all that stuff. Or if we don't think we're ever going to make it work, we can delete it, whatever you want to do. For right now, I will come in out the form. We can delete it later if we want. And I'm going to stick a button in there to log in with Google. So let's throw a button in here. It's going to say sign in with Google. It'll be a button of type button. It is not a submit button. Class name, um, I think I already have a style for buttons. Yep, right here. So I'll use that. Already using Aphrodite, so CSS styles dot button. See how that looks. There it is, sign in with Google. Beautiful. I could put that, uh, let's put that right inside the form because the form has a background color already. So I'll get rid of my, um, my, my label, my input, and my button, but I'll leave the form and I'll put my. Uh, Google button just inside there. How's that? There we go. Lots of space. Then the question is, what the heck do we do? When we click it, we need an on click. I'll say uh, this dot authenticate. Then we just need to figure out how that works. This dot authenticate, right for the function you want, not the function you have. So let's do it. Authenticate. What's it going to do? It's going to call wherever that is. Sign in with pop-up. So we need to import some stuff from base. I don't think we need base itself. We need to import some of those named exports, auth and Google provider. Remember those? We just exported them. I 
Export auth, export Google provider. Import them from base. So auth is firebase.auth open close parens. And according to our documentation, we call that dot sign in with pop up. Very good. So auth dot sign in with pop up. And pass it in a provider. Like this provider right here, Google provider. And then it has us calling then. Anybody know what that dot then is all about? What the heck's that all about? Anybody, ever, anybody ever used promises before in JavaScript? Anybody know what I mean when I say asynchronous? We haven't really talked about anything asynchronous yet. So to oversimplify a bit, asynchronous simply means that something happens in the background. So sometimes, let's say, uh, Sign them with pop ups is going give, to give us back some sort of result. Const result equals that. And I want to console log whatever that result is. Well, sometimes this isn't how it works because sign in with pop up runs in the background. So what, it'll go ahead and run the next line immediately before the sign in has actually finished. We won't have the result yet. So there are several ways of dealing with that when it happens. And one way that we've seen before is callbacks. Another way is returning an object called a promise. And we're not going to get into that too much, but that's what's going on whenever you see dot then in an example. So the way promises work is you call dot then and you pass that a function and that function will run whenever the background operation finishes. So in the case of sign in with pop up, like I said, the next line, line 13 is going to run immediately, even if we haven't actually signed in yet. So result isn't going to equal a gosh darn thing because we won't have actually signed in. Instead, we have to call then and pass in a callback, which will receive the result as an argument. So if we need to do something after we know that sign up has finished, we're going to have to do it inside dot then. And then we're guaranteed that by then sign in will have actually finished. So let's just do exactly that console log result. See what happens. See if anything happens. So sign in with pop up happens asynchronously. In other words, in the background. So if we want something to run that is guaranteed to run after that's finished, we need to call that thing inside a callback to then. So let's see what happens. Sign in with Google. OK, it exploded. Great. Cannot read sign in with pop up of undefined. Auth it did not find. Import auth from base. Dot slash base goofball. Base isn't the, the string base isn't the thing. So dot slash base. Let's try this again. Hey, a pop up. Choose an account. Okay, so many versions of me. Let's sign in as Gmail me. Yay, something happened. It gave me some sort of object. Additional user info, credential, operation type, user. So here's user. User looks like it has a lot of exciting properties on it. Ooh, there's display name. There's email. There's photo URL. But that's my avatar. There's a UID. All right, we're getting back some good stuff, some stuff we can use. How did uh, handle submit work? It called handle auth, right? And passed in a user object. We could do that, couldn't we? Remember this? What if instead of doing that from handle submit, we do it from inside authenticate here? Um, so sign in with pop up, then. We get a result, and then we call whatever this function is. So let's just put a nice little function in here that calls this.props.handleauth. 
and sets UID. Okay, what happened here? So this is result that I logged out here, that I logged to the console. So result.user seems to be this user object. Let's say const user equals result.user. Or I think we learned this trick, right? Const curly brace user equals result. Does the same thing. So let's call handle auth. Let's pass in, we need a UID, right? So user.uid, I saw that out here. UID. Uh, we wanted a display name. User.display name was a thing. Email. User.email was a thing. Well, heck, now that I know it's a possibility, how about photo URL too? Uh, they did URL all caps, which is kind of not the way we usually camel case things in React. So I'm going to change it to U lowercase rl, but it's photo URL in Google. Let's see how this works. Let's sign in. Sign in as Gmail me. And there I am, I'm signed in. Let's look at uh, my components. Here's app, here's user, and I see Dave Struess, dstruess at gmail.com. I see this photo URL here. I'm going to assume that's my avatar. And I see a UID. So now we're getting an actual value from a real API instead of hard coding in a bunch of nonsense and just reusing my email. Now I've got Dave Struess up here instead of just my email address. We did it. Go us. Is that how you did it? Those who did it? Pretty much? Anybody do anything different? Yeah. Oh, you did email and password instead of Google? Cool. Well, let's start with this. Authenticate with Google via Firebase. Google Auth. 